Welcome to the Level Up Life Podcast. I'm your host, Scotty Hobbs, and welcome to this episode. Today, we're going to have a conversation with Stephen Hatch. Stephen's passion for excellence, personal development, and training has taken him to stages around the world where he's trained with the likes of Jack Canfield, Larry King, various NBA players, Olympic medalists, and was even selected to present an award to a Nobel Prize winner at the pre-Oscar party in Hollywood. After a successful nine-year real estate career, which included a year service as a local association president, Stephen moved into an international marketing company as a senior executive. During his six years as key executive with that company, the company grew to levels that ranked it well within the top 100 marketing companies in the world with sales in over 50 countries. Some of his other accomplishments include a U.S. patent, author of a book, multiple international photo awards, including magazine covers and displays at a movie premiere in Broadway and Hollywood, and several personal roles in local TV commercials, radio, and billboards. Stephen, welcome to the show. Oh, Scotty, thank you. By the way, super privileged and honored that you would think of me and include me on uh, such a great topic. I, I love what you've done with with. Uh, this effort to go out and share just some inspiring, great leadership principles, things about family and God, um, hats off to you. Great job. So thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of it. Um, name Stephen Hatch. I was born and raised in Southeast Idaho, spent the majority of my life here. Um, I'm a father of seven kids. Uh, my last one was a um, kind of a Christmas surprise. I was almost 50. My wife was 48. So he's now six years old and we have come to adore and love him. And what a blessing that's been to our family. But yeah, six kids. I have three grandkids about the same age as my little boy as well, which is kind of fun and interesting. But um, that's a major piece of my life is, is family. That really is one of the core pieces. Uh, you know, I start with my relationship with God, then family, then everything else kind of falls into place. I love that. You know, I thinking about you, you know, I wanted to have you on here because of your uh, devotion to your family, but I also know you've accomplished some, you know, big things throughout your career and done some pretty incredible things. And speaking of family, I remember when I first started my business uh, as a complete stranger at that time, you reached out to me and wanted to do some video work with me. And one thing that stuck out to me is you brought one of your kids with you to do that work. So you were working, but you brought your kid with you and involved your kid in that work. And that was, that was a good example to me in the beginning of my career. Uh, thanks. I remember that time. That was a lot. That was actually really fun. In fact, Scotty, you and I go back a long ways that we hadn't crossed paths, but we have yeah. a family connection that goes back. Your grandfather was a neighbor of mine, um, Bill. Yeah. And adore him to this day. I, I just have so many great, great memories of him. Your dad uh, was a little bit older than I, but um, yeah, you come from such a great family. But yeah, that that day that uh, we reached out and had that conversation about um, doing a little video together, it was because I was admiring the growth and the path that you had been on. Um, probably a year or two prior to that, maybe even three, um, I was doing a photo shoot and your wife was one of the models. I don't know if you even remember this story I... either. I didn't remember that, but now that you're saying it, I recall her telling me that. Yeah, yeah. So it was fun to meet her and, and start to get a little bit of, of your family story through her and to see where you've come from in those past days to where you are now uh, is just so inspiring to me as well. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Speaking of uh, growing up uh, near my grandparents, uh, just to kind of play off of that conversation, my grandpa, I don't I don't think I've ever really talked about this on the po podcast. But he, you know, he worked for Ford when he was younger, and then he went off and started his own auto mechanic business where he, you know, fixed cars in his garage. I just remember seeing him as a kid, I would see him interact with clients and he was just such a friendly, uh, interactive, funny guy that was trustworthy. And so he built a great business for himself where he could work from his own home. And so he was always an inspiration to me uh, as I was growing up. Yeah. And likewise, every time. So my dad owned an auto parts store as well when I was growing up. So I had the privilege of delivering parts to, to okay. Bill, both when he was at Ford and uh, when he moved uh, to his home and worked out of his garage. Um, but every time I got that call, the, a lot of people in that industry are not fun to deliver parts to. Yeah. But Bill was always great. He always took a little time to connect with you. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for bringing that. Um, he always brought a smile to your face and you always left a better person because you were around him. 
That's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. My dad's going to enjoy listening to this and, and reminiscing back on that as well. Uh, for sure. So, so talk to me a little bit about uh, your career and your path and, and what you've, you know, what you've gone through. Like, where did your career start? Uh, what things have you done? Oh, I, I have a really diverse background. Um, yeah. and, and it's been kind of a growth struggle um, through many kind of di different things, but I, I, I'll kind of start where I, I'm now. And I honestly, I hate talking about myself, but it, so that it just gives some context to the rest of our discussion. I yeah. think it may empower some principles that we'll end up talking about at some point. Um, so I've, um, I've walked the red carpet at Hollywood at a pre-Oscar party. I presented on stage. I gave an award to a Nobel laureate. Um, I've shared the speaking stage. In fact, I've, I've spoken um, on stages in over 25 countries around the world. Um, I'm currently running a billion dollar real estate company right here in Southeast Idaho. Um, I've authored books. I'm an international award winning photographer. Um, I've just had so many privileges that have just landed on the table in front of me because of who I associated with great parents who instilled in me a desire to become more connecting with God and allowing him to be in my life and lead me. Um, and, and the list honestly could go on and on and on. When, when I sit down, when you ask me for a bio, I'm scrambling, trying to pull something together. And when I, I look at that list, I become very humble and grateful and blown away because it looks so unreal. Serious. I've, I've taught on 20 in, on stages in over 25 countries around. I'm just a Southeast Idaho guy, right? You know, I'm the CEO of a billion dollar company. <laughs> It's the people I have the privilege of working with and the trust that they put back in me, but, but that we get to work together. Yeah. You know, I authored a book, uh, all, all kinds of weird things that just were circumstantial privileges that came together because of a direction that I was headed. I love that. You mentioned uh, some parents that instilled, you know, things inside of you. Tell me, like, as a kid, what did you imagine your life looking like what did you imagine doing with with your life for work and in your future you know i'm i'm really grateful my uh, my parents uh, dad owned his own business since i was a little kid um, i think i started pushing a broom when i was about 6 or 7 years old at his auto shop and i uh, had the privilege of working with him and one of the principles he always taught me he said son take care of the client and the money will take care of itself and, and that was such brilliant instruction and, and principles for me. I, you know, when I got into real estate years and years later, um, I would never look at, hey, I'm going to get paid this much in commission. I always just took care of the people. And then someday a check showed up and I was like, oh, cool, this is great. But living in that mindset of always taking care of the other people, you never cut corners. You always do the right thing. And the, the principle that really landed, so let, Money is important. It, it helps fund our lives and allows us to become or express ourselves more fully who we truly are. Yeah. And, and having that ability to express ourselves more fully, whether it's service, uh, charitable work, et cetera, et cetera, money is important. So there is that time that you got to watch that. But if you can base your interaction with people, your service with other people, just from a love and concern and a caring for other people, it all comes around. And, and it has spoiled me very, very well. Um, I think I've done better off financially because I put others first, because that level of trust and repeat business coming back um, is real and it's huge. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, listening to you talk about that, you mentioned you don't cut corners and do the best you can to serve your client. I, I think I see just too often just on social media. I don't know how much you are on social media, but I just see people like do this, like, and it will make things easier. You don't have to do the work. And I just get the, the worst feeling. I'm like, no, you got to put in the work. You got to serve the client. You got to work on yourself. There's no just shortcut and things are going to happen more automatically or whatever. Right. Oh, you, you've, uh, you hit a, a personal story uh, right between the eyes. Uh, so three weeks ago, um, you remember Paige Ann. She's the one that uh, sang on American Idol and finished in the yes. top 20. She's right here from Southeast Idaho. Um, brilliant girl, brilliant voice. Um, her uh, mother works at our office. Um, three weeks ago, I had a dream that I took voice lessons from her. 
Okay. And that I sang a duet with her, uh, The Prayer by uh, what Celine Dion, and um, I, I'm going to forget his name, but just a beautiful emotional prayer. And, and I woke up and I was inspired. Well, her mom called the next day and I'm like, hey, th this has to be connected. And so I told her, I said, hey, I had a dream about singing with your daughter and, and it was the prayer. And she's all, oh, I've always wanted my daughter to sing that song. And so she said, you got to go and do it. Take a lesson from her and let's, let's sing a song. And, and I always thought I had a pretty decent singing voice. Okay. Yeah. So I show up for this lesson. And we sit down and we, we put it on and, and we start singing it together. And um, when I get to a certain octave, uh, I go falsetto. Okay, falsetto is, oh, uh, you know, you have that hop over into the falsetto kind of a yeah. thing. And she stops me and she's like, okay, I got to teach you how to sing mixed voice. You know, and Scotty, you probably understand what that means, being a musician and everything. There's this ability that you can skip the falsetto and have this strength and this really strong voice at the higher registers. And so she's teaching me, trying to teach me how to get into this higher level of, of mixed voice that would empower me to sing this song that I just have this passion for and express it like I wanted to and, and have that experience that I had in the dream. We get done with the lesson and I'm leaving with two two pieces of new knowledge. Number one, I am so much more impressed with who she is and what she's accomplished. Oh my goodness. Amazing. Yeah. Number two, I have not paid the price to have what I thought I wanted. And so the next couple of days, going back to what you're talking about, the reality of what I want versus what am I willing to pay the price for became a big battle in my mind. And I still haven't resolved it. I still want to sing that song. I still want to record that with her. I want to hear, I want to share it with everybody because when I sing that song, when I sing that prayer, I want people to feel what I have inside. I want them to connect with God through this prayer kind of a thing, right? Right. But am I willing to pay the price? Yep. That's a deep. It hurts a little bit because now I have to prioritize things in my life and make that decision. What am I willing to give myself to? Yeah. So I'm sure being where you're at in your life and in talking about some of the accomplishments that sometimes seem unbelievable to you, you've had to pay the price. So thinking about this dream that you had and, and this expression that you want to put out into the world, how does one bridge the gap between that dream of what you want to experience in life or express and make actually making it happen? You know, Scotty, what a, what a great question. The, the majority, I don't think I've ever met somebody that didn't have some ambition or goal or desire at some level. And, and where they are and where they want to get to tends to, to remain a permanent gap. They never bridge and pay the price. And they just keep waiting for the boat to come in. They keep waiting for their break to happen. They keep waiting and waiting and waiting and they never begin. But I want to take you through um, six personal perspectives that really kind of lay out a framework or a roadmap to go from where we are to that element of mastery and accomplishment right. to kind of jump over this barrier that all of us carry. Um, the first principle is, um, is self-mastery, right? The moment that we can stop and look ourselves in the mirror and come to the realization that who is in charge of who I become? And you look and, and you see yourself and, and it's like, it's me. I'm my greatest hindrance. I'm my greatest empowerment. And so the first step is I have to become master of myself. I have to become the one that's disciplining to create the action to move forward and step into the unknown, step into the fear, break past those things that hold me back, right? Right. Then once we start to realize and embrace and commit to self-mastery, now we can introduce the second principle, which is the 80-20 principle or the Pareto principle, which just states that 80% of the results that we get in life come from 20% of the activities that we do. So the more that we can spend our time in that 20%, all of a sudden our life starts to give us that leveraged return. Th that principle, the, the day I understood it was different than the day I realized the implementation of it was pivotal and so important and, and had to be done, yeah. right? So now that you have those two things together, now we jump into an interesting piece. It's called E to P, entrepreneurial to purposeful. So each of us have this ceiling in our lives that we naturally bump up against. It's the natural 
pieces where we're comfortable in the natural talents that we already have. And that is the entrepreneurial life that we live in, right? And as we look at that, we see the other side of it. We see people who have gone past that, who reside on the other side of it. And we, we, we desire to be there and we finally get enough courage to try it. We push through that level and get to the other side and we are so uncomfortable. We feel so out of place. We feel so vulnerable that what do we do? We go back, right? We go back to the safety and we, we consign ourselves to this is my life. This is where I can reside because that's where I'm comfortable and safe. But then again, we read a great book. We listen to a great podcast. We go to church. The spirit speaks to us and tells us there's so much more in our lives. And all of a sudden we see the other side of that break again. And we take a run at it and, and we just get caught in this cycle until we adopt the right models, systems, tools, and support, right? If I want to become like Scotty Hobbs, I need to do what Scotty Hobbs does. I need to surround myself with people like Scotty Hobbs. You know, like Jim Rohn, he talks about that we become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So if you're residing in an area you're not happy with, consider the environment that you're in. Are you following the right systems, tools, and models? Do you have the right support system to help you learn and get through that barrier and get to the next level, which leads us to the next principle, which make your, your pursuit of this educational base. So really adopt and embrace the educational model of always exposing, always reading. I look behind you, all those great books that you have there, they have contributed, contributed massively to who you are today. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. Yes. Right. Yeah. So as you continue to put things in, the magic of it, you can go back and read the same book every year and learn something new from it every time, right? Right. It's that you've grown and you've seen a new place that you need some knowledge. It was in the book before. That's one of the things I love about the scriptures, right? The more you read it, the more you grow, the more is unfolded to you and the more you learn and become. Yeah. yeah so making education an important cycle of your life that you keep going back to again and again. Then the next one is remove your limiting beliefs. Limiting, limiting beliefs are the chains that hold us back, right? We have to be able to step away and just abandon those limiting beliefs. And how do you do that? Education, right? Reading books, reading success stories of other people that have broken through, associating with great people who have already broken through, mentoring with people who have already broken through. Kind of like my going and visiting with Paige Ann. She, she figured it out. She learned. I now, if I will give myself to the system, to a model, and the accountability and training and mentorship, I can break through too. And that limiting belief, once you take that first step and you find yourself okay, then it empowers you to take the next step. And, and, and that limiting belief starts to crumble and come down a little bit more all the time, right? Then the last one is just accountability. Accountability to yourself and to others. And you get that leverage point, you know, uh, Scotty, when you first started working out, did you do it all by yourself or did you find somebody that uh, you had to partner and be accountable to? Yeah. You know, I was working at my job and me and the guy in the same office every day, we would check in with each other about the soda, about the Gardettos yeah. from, the pop, from the machine. Right. We held each other accountable. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that gave you the strength when you were weak to do the activity. Right. Yeah, it's such an important principle. Yeah, so those six personal perspectives are really a great catalyst or vehicle to go from where you are with those desires, those dreams, those ambitions, and get to the reality and achievement of those pieces. I love that. I'm going to have to listen back to this and write those down and study those a little bit more. I, I heard some things today from you where, where I know I need to make some small adjustments. So I appreciate oh, that. Don't we all every day? Every time I go through these myself, it is an introspection, yeah. right? It's a self-discovery of the next level, but that's the beautiful thing about life. Yep. Continue growth, right? Yeah, I love that. So I'm just thinking about you and this career path you've been on. You've obviously faced some pretty hard challenges in your life. What, what's, if you'd like to share, is there a hard challenge you've been through and something that you learned from it? Yes. Yeah, this one's actually not too long ago. You know, um, yeah, so it's, it's uh, I have a lot of gratitude about it now. But um, a couple of years ago, um, 
you know, you mentioned that your whole purpose behind this is um, helping people with their relationships with their family and, and with God. Yeah. Mine involves my family, which um, actually helps strengthen my relationship with God too. But um, one of the great things you uh, discover as a parent is that eventually your kids are going to make their own choices. And uh, sometimes they're not in line with what you dreamed or thought they were going to be. Not that they're wrong or incorrect, but as, as a parent, and I think this is right to start with, as a parent, you, uh, as spouses, you get together and you kind of create a plan or a strategy or a direction that you want to take the family, your tradition, your values, um, all those different things come into play. And so you create this beautiful life and you start down the road. And then that day happens when one of your children um, chooses a little different path than what you were planning with, with what you'd been working on. And the first, the first thing that went through my mind is I failed. As a dad, I failed. And I started to go through that mourning process of, of giving up, of, of pain, of struggle, um, and it hurt. It hurt really, really bad. And the further I got into it, the more I saw that I was pulling away from not only that child, but my entire family. Because if, if I resign myself to failure as a father, it applies to all my kids. I start to, you know, there's, there's this principle that I love, that which you focus on expands. If I start focusing on what's not right in my life, I start to see more of what's not right in my life. And I miss what's right in my life. And I was blind to all the beautiful things that I had in my life still. I was blind still to that same relationship of the child that was making some decisions that, that weren't in line with what I had hoped and dreamed of. And I was losing that relationship. But over the course of a year, year and a half, two years, a lot of knee time praying and pleading with God, the pivot point, the turning point was the time that I was kneeling there. And I said, uh, Heavenly Father, what am I to learn from this? How can I change to become what you want me to be? And, and that impression and, and that, that spiritual confirmation coming back of, of how much he loves me and how much he loves each of my children. And what my role was, was to do the same thing that he was with me. In fact, kind of a funny thing, Scotty, at one point uh, early in this, this piece, I was praying and I said, oh, Heavenly Father, I'm going through this, 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 and this, and children are doing this, this, and this, and this. And I'm like, oh. and he goes, well, I have you. <laughs> you know and i'm like okay i get it i understand it but it has yeah. been such a beautiful learning i um my relationship with this this child of mine is better now than it ever has been in my entire life and in, in our entire relationship um we went to breakfast last week and and just had just such a wonderful visit such a great experience um, last night we were playing pickleball and it was a hoot. You know, we, we have really grown together through this struggle. And I think that's one of those powerful principles. The moment we can step outside of ourselves as we're struggling, going through that, that major pain and start to ask questions, what can I learn from this? How can I lose the pride of me and allow God into my life so that I can become more? that I can become his completely, that I can become an instrument in his hands to do his work even, yeah. even with my own family. That's beautiful. Thank you for, for opening up and sharing that with us. Now, now so, so that's an, an amazing example uh, inside of your family. And as you were thinking about that, I was thinking about my five kids and they're growing up as well. And so I had the, the chills and I think sometimes when someone shares a struggle or something they're going through, it opens up more relatability between people uh, and openness and feel like you're not alone in all things, right? Um, thinking about um, that same concept in business, have you, you know, being a CEO of, of a billion dollar company right now, do you 
um, ever see that same concept inside of your work where there's some sort of challenge or where you get focused on the wrong thing versus the, the good things that are going on and how do you how do you manage that right no that's another great question for sure um the business that i'm in is really kind of really unique yeah. you know i'm the ceo of this billion dollar company but it's made up of a bunch of independent people who make their own decisions as to when they're going to be working and everything else so my roles and responsibility are kind of about um, creating the vehicle for these people to succeed in and working hand in hand with them to make that vehicle very nimble and successful and great. Um, so as these struggles come up, they tend to resolve around communication, miscommunication specifically. Yeah. Um, and so being able to learn how to commun effect communicate effectively really becomes important. But on the other side of it, even when you communicate perfectly, we can be misunderstood. And so being able to go back and, and put stuff together becomes a very, very important skill set. Um, but one of the biggest frustrations, and I think this will tie into your question and how others can, can learn and, and grow from um, this scenario, is one of the biggest challenges and frustrations I have at work is people missing the opportunity and the vision. Me being able to look into who they are and see their potential, their cap capability, capacity, um, ability to achieve and them not allowing themselves to believe it, them not allowing me to pour myself into them, them not allowing me to give them a skill set and practice with them and help them master it so that they can become what I see in them. But on the other side, those that come in and they're teachable and they're humble and, and um, are willing, oh, just glorious and, and just really, really, really good. But another key piece is also the people that I'm surrounded with, the the Agent Leadership Council, which is a bunch of real estate agents that I work with that are high producers, anytime I sit down with them and have a, a conversation, oh, it is gold. It is just so good. Um, the, um, the other staff members that I have the privilege of working with, they are so selfless, so contributing, so united, so unified. That, that, oh, there's nothing that we can't accomplish. It is just so beautiful. So a lot of these problems start to go away or become smaller, or we're able to navigate them because of the people I've surrounded myself with, and also the principles that we make our decisions off of. So having that, that mission statement of who we are, like, like this morning, um, my CFO came into the office and said, hey, this scenario came up. Here's the two options that we have. And uh, we sat and we broke it down to what are the base principles that we're making this decision off of. There's an obvious decision to make with it, but let's review our mission statement and what we stand for and measure it against it. Does it fit what we stand for, the principles and values that we are as a company? And it was fun to see that they connected. But just to reconnect to that really can help as you navigate the difficult things in, in business and life. That's awesome. So I, I, I love that. Um, that you base the decision that came in, the, the obstacle that came in off of a predetermined mission statement uh, and, and clarity about what you guys stand for. Yeah. So um, I, got a, I got a question. You're, you're dealing with growing your company, working with multiple other people. Uh, I love the, you made me think about uh, the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill about the importance of having a mastermind, having great people that you surround yourself with and the magic that happens with that. That's kind of what I heard from you as you are talking about these incredible people that you work with. Um, as you are navigating um, running your this business and having a family with kid, multiple kids and grandkids, how do you maintain some sort of balance? Are you ever overwhelmed? 100%. Yep. Okay. In fact, that, that reminds me of a question. I was interviewing one of our top agents, actually two of our top agents uh, here about two years ago. And um, I, I asked one of them the question. I said, on a scale of one to 10, and this is an agent that is just really delivering top quality value and really having a great career, earning a million plus uh, annually and providing that quality of service. And so I asked him the question. I said, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being your life is out of control and, 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 and one is I'm a master of it. Where are you on the chaos value? And he said, 14, 15, 
kind of a thing, you know, and we had some younger agents that had, they, they looked up to this individual and they were just kind of like, you feel out of control. And then the other agent, I asked the same question. He goes, Oh, I'm, I'm so much better than he is. You know, I think I'm only an 11, you know? And so it illustrated an interesting point. And that is balance in life is, is really a difficult pursuit. And honestly, I don't know if we ever achieve it, but what I think, and this, this is a key word in my life that I've really been focusing a lot on the last uh, six months or so. And, and I'll share an experience that kind of illustrates it moments, moments, life is comprised of moments. And the little moments are the ones that really make the biggest deal in our life. You know, when we're making a job change, we're considering somebody we're going to marry, we really slow the boat down and we evaluate everything before we make a decision on that, right? But the small moments are the ones that compile to create the life that we have. And, and here's an example. Um, I have a lot of dreams and ambitions that I still have not achieved yet pursuits and things that, that I'm, I'm after. And a lot of times the time that I can do that is when I'm at home, because here, here at the office, I'm pretty focused on what I got to get done here. Yeah. So at night, you know, after dinner, we clean up the dishes. You may find me sitting at my computer, doing some stuff, trying to move one of these other projects forward. I have that six-year-old boy and he would come up to me, dad, can you play with me? And my answer would be, as soon as I finish this project, I would love to, right? But something happened, and I don't remember what the catalyst was, but I remember making a decision that I am not going to miss that moment again. And so last night, I'm working on a project, and I get this little tug on my shirt sleeve. And I turn down, and here's these big, beautiful eyes just staring at me. And he said, Dad, can you play with me? And my new moment mantra is yes. I don't care what I'm doing on the computer right now. I have prioritized him and that moment over what, what's on my screen that project that I'm trying to accomplish to get my dream and, and ambition fulfilled, right? Is not more important than that moment with my son, getting down on the floor as a 56 year old playing with Legos. You know, that is my moment. That is my purpose. That is my calling. That is where I can have the biggest impact. And so starting to stop and recognize those little moments and valuing and investing in them at the same level that I considered um, my wife, when I'm dating and, and my life is changing because of that, those small little moments, it's beautiful. Yeah, that is beautiful. I'm going to have to adopt some new mantras as well. You know, I always talk with, as I'm mentoring people talking about, um, you know, having pockets of time and being where you are um, and having communication with your, your wife or your spouse and your kids about, you know, cause I work from my home. I'm not in an office, so I have to communicate daddy's working right now daddy's not working right now um but there's times sometimes when when we're dealing with uh you may know maybe issues with vacation rentals or problems i'm pretty good with building my health and fitness business during while the kids are at school but i'll find myself doing exactly what you said right there where like can you come shoot hoops and i'll be like after this and so that was that was a moment for me where i was like man i have i'm i'm 42 I got 25 years till the normal retirement age to build investment property stuff and work on problems. And he's 11. I got seven years maybe of him in my home. So I love that example uh, that you shared with me. So I can take yeah. more of those moments. So thank you for that. Oh, pleasure. Yeah. So Stephen, what are you, what are you most passionate about in life? Like we're here on this earth. And what are you most passionate about? What brings you the most joy and passion? You know, um, it, it, it's going to connect back to God. I, I truly feel that my role is to help others find him. And um, I, um, I've had just some beautiful opportunities come uh, over the years that um, um, I get to share those moments with people who, who are struggling and haven't found him and have not invited him to be a part of their lives. Uh, I remember working with um, one individual uh, who had never prayed in their life. 
And as we were just discovering goals and ambitions in life, I, I love to, when I sit down and talk with somebody, I like to go through the life wheel where you rate yourself on the different aspects of life, you know, your financial, your spiritual, your physical, your emotional, all those different aspects of your life. We rank them because I'm a, a, a big believer that the who you are in your life today is because of everything in that will. And if you're soft or um, not as strong in one of those, it will affect the other areas. So as you grow all of those, it empowers you to become more fulfilled and joyful in life um, and be more productive in your focuses of the different pieces. So I'm visiting with this individual and um, we talk about the spiritual aspect and she was like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And so I, I asked if she was okay exploring spirituality. And we did. And she discovered God and invited him into her life. And um, still, when I'll run into her, um, she'll mention from time to time that, you know, yeah, I was talking with God and we're working through this and stuff like that. And that brings me so much joy. I love to see people grow, uh, not only spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, every aspect of their life. As they grow, those are major, major paydays for me. If, if I can have my, my dream in life, Scotty, is um, I want to change people's lives and get no credit for it. I want to be this anonymous person that just happened just to, to come through somebody's life, blessed them in some way because I was an instrument in God's hands, and they became great, and they accomplished something, and, and they discovered who they were. And, and then uh, uh, there's this weird piece of me that would love to even be forgotten completely that I was even a part of that, but that they are different. Yeah. I love that. I have to share an example with you. I know you said that you, you want to have that impact on somebody and then kind of not re realize that it was them that did that. I don't even know what training it was. We were at a church training once in uh, the, in the church building here, and you were teaching something where you are giving an example of how to make friends with somebody. Like you walked in the door and you like, introduced yourself to the people in the front row and we're just teaching the kids i believe it was the kids on how to make friends and uh connect with other people and it may sound weird because because we don't know each other personally that much but i'm very naturally introverted we built an incredible business but i i credit it to my just as my as a child i was or a teenager i'm someone that would come home from school sit in my room and just play guitar for eight hours so i got good at guitar um, I would skate in my backyard, but a lot of things were by myself. I would just focus on a talent or a skill until I mastered it. And so when I started business, I could sit in my office and not talk to anybody and just master the skill of email marketing, SEO websites, um, you know, messaging and, and connecting with people like online, you know, but not face to face. And you know, I was an adult, I was maybe 38. I can't remember what, what age I was when I went to that. But I had a moment there where I was like, I want to be like Steven. I want to be somebody that can have that type of energy come in and, and meet and talk to somebody. And I set a goal at that time. I go to a local gym here that I would go in every day and just meet one person. And it was from that church training that you did for the youth. So you played a big role in, in me in, in my late thirties, becoming more socially, um, not so introverted and more, um, friendly to people in the gym and not walk in with my AirPods and not smile at anybody and just stay focused on my work. So I appreciate that, uh, that you did for me. Thanks. That, that means a lot to me. Let, let me throw one back to you. Um, so, um, Halloween over at sneak easy, yes. uh, ran into you first time in years probably right yeah and um we had a we had a conversation a couple of conversations over there and i i want to give you a compliment of what i felt as we're engaging and just visiting what i felt was your love of god it, it was so pure it was so wonderful I, I i i felt like i was basking in in the sunshine on a glorious beach it was so dominant and prevalent, and, and I was inspired by that moment. And I thought, I want people to feel like that around me. 
like how I'm feeling around Scotty right now, that, that I can feel his love and God's love through him. It was beautiful. And, and I actually, I, I apologize. I didn't share that with you sooner because it was impactful. Well, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, man, this is the conversation. I, I'm loving this conversation and, and having a, a great time. I'm like, after this is over, I, I want to connect with you some more. And, and I think we can, we can learn a lot from each other. Deal. So I, I got another question for you. Let's say you meet somebody, whether it's in your business or, or that comes into your life. I, I kind of understand uh, the impact that you want to have on them and leave that mark on them, even without them knowing. But if someone were to ask you like, hey, I want to take my life to the next level, whether it's spiritually in their family relationships or in a business, what advice would you give them? I love that. Um, I'm going to take you through a, a, a three-phase growth pattern. Um, I called it, I, uh, what do I call it? I don't know. I, I gave it a name at one point and I forgot what it is, but the principles are going to stand so beautifully. As human beings, we pursue this moment of joy. We try to find this fulfillment in life. And um, when you start out at the bare minimum level, you, you boil it down to needs. If your needs are not being met, if you don't have food on the table, if you don't have a shelter that you're living in, if you don't have love in your life, when your needs are not met, that becomes the consuming thought and drive an ambition in your life is to get that basic need fulfilled. And so once those needs are fulfilled and you're kind of like, okay, I'm existing now, you start looking around because existing doesn't bring you that element of, of satisfaction, joy, and fulfillment in life, right? And so you start looking around at everything else. And what does the world teach us gives you that joy and, and everything else? It, it's money, fame, and fortune, right? Mm -hmm. So now we start pursuing these wants in life, hoping and dreaming that it's going to fulfill that void that we're pursuing, this drive that all of us have in our lives, trying to achieve that satisfaction and fulfillment in life. And we start acquiring things. We get the new bike. We, we get the, the new uh, iPhone. We get the whatever the, the media is telling us is going to give that satisfaction to us only to find that it brings momentary pleasure. And we still have that void. And now the next level is one that your grandfather was so great at. And my grandfather, the same thing. And that is legacy. All of a sudden, as you move from needs to wants to legacy, a legacy is, is you're creating a better world for people around you. You're serving and loving other people. And the fascinating thing about this is needs is focusing on who? Yourself. It's me. Yeah. Wants is focusing on who? Me oh, again. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, and I'm not saying either one of those are bad. Needs, so important to have taken care of, right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything wrong with having some of your wants? No, I don't think so at all. In fact, having a lot of wants can actually empower you as you move into the legacy piece as well. When you start focusing on the needs of others, when you start loving and serving other people and, and taking care of them, all of a sudden you start to feel fulfilled. You start to find your life and, and it becomes awesome. Years ago, I was unemployed living down in Salt Lake. And, and it was all pity me, pity me. Life is awful. Life is, is atrocious. A neighbor of mine across the street um, was going through open heart surgery, and he didn't have any family in the area. And um, I thought, well, I'm unemployed. Um, I might as well go up to the hospital and at least just sit with his wife while he's in surgery because no family. Yeah. So I'm sitting up there and I'm still a little bit consumed with myself. And my circumstances and situation of being unemployed, and, and it puts a lot of stress on a family when you're unemployed. And um, the moment came when he was out of surgery and in the recovery room, the nurse comes out and says, hey, you can come back and see him now. And I'm thinking just the wife is going to go back. But they said, oh, yeah, why don't you come too? And I'm all, oh. <laughs> we go back there. And this is a big Tongan guy you know, 350 pounds. And, uh, you know, if you've spent any time around the Islanders, they are all love, just so heart expressive. We walk in and he has the tube down his throat, so he can't speak or anything. But he sees me. And as I get close enough, he sticks his hand out. And he grabs my hand. And, and through his eyes, the way he communicated with me, it was as clear as if he spoke. Thank you for being here. 
And my life changed right then. It was no longer a burden to be there supporting and loving them. I was no longer consumed by the circumstances I had put myself in. And um, after several more hours, there were some other neighbors that came up and, and um, I decided to go home. And as I'm driving home, I offer this prayer. And, and I said, man, this is turning into a cry fest. Sorry. That's all right. I said, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you so much for this privilege of experiencing this moment with this family. And, and clearly in my mind came the words, in as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, ye have done it unto me. And I had known that scripture since I was a little kid, but I never understood it until that moment. And it changed my world. You know, as we step into that moment of legacy where we are losing ourselves and helping other people, all of a sudden we find ourselves. And uh, here just a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about the same principle with a group of people, and, and they were talking about, well, yeah, I can't wait for that moment of, of when I have enough money that I can, you know, find, find somebody and send them to college or, or pay off somebody's house or pay their mortgage or whatever. And then we stopped and then had a deeper discussion and said, yeah, but what can we do right now? There's so many things that are cheap to free that why not master the principle of service and legacy and then add to it as you're empowered with resources? Oh, and it was such a great discussion. But yeah, needs, yeah. wants, legacy. I was going to ask you, how do you take yourself from needs and wants into that legacy step, but you just beautifully transition into how to do that? just with what you can, just like your moment in your story of sitting with this man yeah. in that moment. And yeah. we all have that, that opportunity and that ability. Right. Yeah. You know, as you, as you say a prayer in the morning, um, just ask God, say, I need somebody to serve and love today. You know who it is that I need. Put us in our uh, past together at this point and help me recognize that moment. Oh, every day you'll just have a, a gift just handed to yeah. you. I've had multiple experiences in my life where I, I pray for something, sometimes desperately praying for something in my life where you feel like you're at the end, whether it be in family or or whatever. And I remember, I remember one time uh, just in our relationship, just praying and praying and praying uh, that, you know, things would change and shift. And I was doing all the work that I thought I needed to do, you know, I was praying extra and reading extra scriptures. And, and I remember it was in the evening and, and I'm running my business, got all the kids working on my marriage and, and trying to, to get things where, where we're in a really good place. And I remember the door knocked and it was a couple of missionaries. And I remember just being so like irritated because I was just tired. I was like, oh, it's too late to them. I was like, oh, the kids are in bed. It's too late. And I was like, maybe you can come back another day. And they're like, okay. And I shut the door and I just had that realization. I was like, I've been, <laughs> I was like, maybe that's the answer. I've been praying and praying for something. <laughs> so I called them back in and they came in and huge things began to shift in our family's lives. And so sometimes I think we, we pray for things and then we aren't open to the answers and looking for every opportunity for change and growth and and whatnot so i love that so when we're praying remember to look for the answers where they might not not where you want them to be but hidden amongst other people that is so good and you know when you talk about that i start to ask myself the question did i pass somebody by that that he put in my my path today yeah uh, i think you're you're spot on scotty you know just keeping that awareness and staying open to those privileges that are coming to you so yeah. And, and I mean, that's, that's brings fulfillment and takes us into the legacy area, which you talked about as well. Um, but I think as, as someone's, whether they're in real estate like you or in, in sales or in starting their own business, the same principles apply. If you serve people and love people, you said it at the beginning, if you put them first, the money will come in some form or another, your, your needs will be provided for. Yep. 
as you work on that uh, towards that legacy. So I'm going to ask you a question. Are you, and we're getting towards wrap, wrapping this up. We'll, we'll let you get back to your work. And um, I have a meeting with someone that not part of my business, but somebody that uh, is near and dear to me that's going through some therapy and and I'm going to be there. And this conversation helped me know what I need to do in that conversation. But I'm going to ask you, where are you, are you living the life that you imagined like 10 years ago? Is your life how you imagined it would be? Not at all. Yeah. Ex Not at all. I want you to expand on that. Um, God is so good. at pushing you and getting you to where you need to be if you allow him. And sometimes that doesn't include the dreams and ambitions and directions that you had played uh, or planned out and laid out. And um, I'm actually in a better place than I had dreamed of. Um, and it came with a lot of, um, we'll call them spiritual two by fours, a lot of dark moments, a lot of challenges, uh, a lot of tears. Um, but yeah, I am, I'm definitely in a better place than I had dreamed I would be 10 years ago. You know, 10 years ago, it was, it was more in the, uh, the wants segment, Yeah. you know, and, um, I don't struggle financially uh, to take care of my needs. And, uh, we, we have enough to do some wants and stuff too, but to have, Oh, I can't believe I'm going to say this out loud, but to have those struggles and those trials um, is more valuable than any dollar. And I hate to say that, but who I am becoming because of that, yeah. um, it fills my heart with a lot of gratitude, a lot of gratitude. And I, and I know it's not done. I, <laughs> God's good enough at times to give you a little uh, foresight that um, I'm not done with you yet. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're still so young. He's got a lot of work to do with us. Yeah, exactly. You know, I love that you share that. And this is something I've never even uh, talked about, even as I'm um, mentoring people in my business or on my social media, I, I tend to share a lot of things, but you sharing that um, and that question in the way that you answered that just so authentically makes me kind of want to share kind of something where I'm at as well. So there, there became a point in, in my business where I set this huge financial goal and we got there. And, but I was a mess. I was working a lot of hours. I was playing music in bars with lots of drinking and craziness going on and not spending very much time with my family. And I still was setting business goals and I had business goals to double that number of where we had gotten to. And then God got in my face about how I needed to change, you know, and I had this moment. Um, I, I think I've shared this with a few close people, but I was just similar to the, the, the missionaries knocking on the door. I was, I was praying uh, for my marriage. My wife had left me and I was trying to run this business and have kids. And I remember just on the floor for hours in the bathroom, in the dark, just crying. Like i I don't know how I got to this place or to this point and, and just asking for, you know, help. And I was still not willing to change some things yet. There was things I didn't want to change. And I remember, I don't know if I fell asleep or a personal vision, but I remember uh, feeling like I had died, like, the, uh, like I had passed on to the other side and I was standing before God. And I remember it felt like a moment, an instant that my whole family was standing next to me, holding hands, my wife and my five kids. And he showed my whole life to my family and things that I had not taken care of in my life. And I was embarrassed and they were uh, able to pass on to this more beautiful life. And I was not with that. I didn't have the opportunity to go with them. So that forced me to make some big changes. And I remember coming out and talking to my wife through some things. And I mean, I had a big business retreat with 200 people and multiple houses, like coming up a few days later, and I had to call them and be like, I'm, I can't be there. My family working on my, 
I got to work on some things with my family and I got to be to my daughter's dance recital that I was going to skip, like all these big things and made some huge shifts. And uh, uh, we're, you know, we're in, a, you know, it's been probably seven, almost eight years since that time. And we're in the most beautiful place now relationship wise and relationship with the kids. And like right before this, I was at my kids, you know, lots of things I could do in my business, but I was at his thing where he was a blacksmith and gave a presentation and just things are so beautiful in my life. Uh, but my income, instead of growing to two times what it was is half of what it was before, but it's, I'm so much more happy and peaceful and in love with life and my wife and my kids and the future. So I know that I know this is an interview of you, but you want to made me want to share that with you. So sometimes you just have to have those moments where you like realize, okay, what is my legacy? Like, how can I move forward? Right. You know, and Scotty, the thing I really love that you emphasize so well, your story just really illustrates it so well, is that principle that when you put God first, everything else is better. Yeah. everything else is better and more fulfilling, you know, and, and you go back and you look at that time of your life and you're pursuing some of those things, trying to get that joy and, and rush out of life. You know, you, you can look at every aspect of your life is better when you put God first. Yeah. You know, even when you look at how the world defines some things, if you go on a vacation to a beautiful location, if God is first, it'll be a better vacation. When you're having a romantic evening with your spouse, and you put God first, it is more fulfilling, more joyful, more everything than if you don't. It, it, the principle is so brilliantly perfect and awesome. You put God first and you watch the miracles of everything else in your life. Yes. And the miracles of your life, that's one of the things my wife was and I were talking about. We were talking about some current struggles in the economy and the, in the business and vacation rentals and, and sell everything, just with everything. And she, and I'm so grateful to have a great wife, was just like, I believe if we keep doing what we're doing, growing ourselves, putting God first in our family, her words exactly la last night were, God will deliver. Yeah. And, and deliver, we don't know exactly what that means, but we will be good and we'll be happy and growing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Love well, that. I want to ask I want to ask you one last question, Stephen, before I let you go. Where do you see yourself in the next five to ten years? What do you want to do? Mm. Th that's that's a really interesting question, Scotty. You know, I used to have a more clear direction and plan, yeah. but over the past few years, as I've been uh, humbly been educated from heaven. Um, I'm a little more open right now and have not really defined that uh, out there uh, clearly like I, I have pieces in the past. Yes, I have some things written down and have some specific goals and I'm moving a certain direction, but I'm a little bit more open to the concept of uh, direction from heaven. And it, it kind of reminds me of a, um, a quote that made such a big impact on me that I had to memorize it. Um, my kids, uh, my wife and kids were reading a book called uh, Joan of Arc, a fascinating story about a 16, 17 year old girl back in the mid 1400s in France. And um, she felt she was called of God to liberate her people. It was during the Hundred Years War. And um, so she was able to gain the king's trust, lead the army to liberate some key areas of France. Uh, that were very important. She became very famous in, in their culture, but eventually she was captured and burned at the stake. But before they burned her, they gave her her last rites. And this book, um, it, it may or may not be accurate, but the concept is just so profound. In the book, she makes this quote. She says, every man gives his life for what he believes. Every woman gives her life for what she believes. Sometimes people believe in little or nothing, and yet they give their lives to that little or nothing. One life is all we have to live, and we live it as we believe in living it, and then it is gone. But to surrender what you are and live without belief is more terrible than dying, even more terrible than dying young. You know, it's an amazing quote, right? And, and it makes you stop and, and evaluate your own life and look at it and say, what am I giving my life to? Because my daily activities dictate my beliefs. Yeah. 
And so, you know, kind of having that mindset of what am I giving my life to and going back to the experience you shared, the day that I stand before God and I'm accountable for the life that I lived, for my family, for the lives that I impacted, will I be able to give him the report that I desire to give him in my heart? Wow. I think that's an amazing and incredible way to end this, Stephen. Leave us all introspectively thinking, do my daily actions, mindset, activities align with how I want to report at the end of my life? Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you, Stephen, for being on here today and sharing so much incredible insight uh, and wisdom with us. I'm so grateful for this time that we got to spend together. Likewise, it's been a privilege for sure, Scotty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this incredible episode with Stephen Hatch. And we hope that you enjoyed the content that we shared with you today and invite you to send this to some friends. We'll see you next time. And don't forget that your leveled up life is just a few decisions away.